On October 23, 2023, during one of his weekly appearances on the Pat McAfee show, Rogers took a veiled shot at the Kansas City Chiefs tight yeah. Travis Kelsey, referring to Kelsey as Mr. Pfizer, for his participation in an awareness campaign urging people to get vaccinated against COVID. McAfee made sure to note on air that he was vaccinated, an implicit rejection of Rogers' position, but he didn't challenge his friend about it. And he expressed surprise afterward that anyone expected him to. Yeah, I, I get that from journalists all the time. They have so much contempt for me that I didn't, quote, challenge, you know, many of my more dissident guests. But I got better content from them. I got, you know, a better conversation from them because I wasn't imposing my moral judgment. So journalists often venerate challenging guests and it makes them look tough to their peers, but they do it in a way that usually invokes moral judgments or other judgments that shuts down their guests and puts people in a defensive crouch and then limits the things that they'll say. So a, a more easygoing approach without the judgment tends to you know, elicit uh, far better interviews. I didn't challenge them enough, right? The crying Nazi. Who was a crying Nazi? I didn't challenge him enough. I remember and, and this was a journalist who was essentially a, a, a member of Antifa, but uh, also working as a journalist, right? Many journalists are effectively members of Antifa, right? Journalism is opposed. Their real agenda is, you know, their left-wing activism. And, and because, you know, I didn't confront, I didn't pronounce enough moral judgments in my interviews with people, right? Judgments that would shut people down and completely, you know, spoil an interview or if not completely end it. That's not the line of work he's in, folks. He was just kibitzing with his free-thinking friend. Then on January 2nd, 2024, Rogers shared on McAfee's show a slanderous rumor about the late-night host Jimmy Kimmel and Jeffrey Epstein. So this late-night host is, is a degenerate. So I, I'm not sure that he did anything that uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, might have said on the Pat McAfee show, but it's not like this uh, late night host was some, you know, sterling uh, paragon of moral virtue. Kimmel's show airs on ABC, which, like ESPN, is owned by Disney, meaning that McAfee had let his buddy use his platform to smear a co-worker. Kimmel responded angrily on X, calling Rogers a soft-brained wacko and threatening to sue. This time, even McAfee seemed to know that Rogers had gone Okay, Elliot Blatt, that was very funny. The vax works, bro. It doesn't prevent COVID, but it does prevent you from being caught an anti-vaxxer. Too far. Later that day, he met with the only two people at Disney he recognizes as authority figures, Jimmy Pitaro and Bob Iger, then expressed contrition during his broadcast the next day. He I mean, how chat is that? I mean, this guy earns the contempt of this journalist because he's not overly solicitous of his bosses. Right? This guy got one of his bosses fired. He only recognizes essentially two bosses at ESPN. Right? Everyone, all the other people in authority, he doesn't bow down to them. And this journalist resents that. Chalked it up to shit talk gone awry and added, we apologize for being part of it. Once again, there was no evident discipline for McAfee. Look, there are different types of conversations and you don't take the statements and jokes made in you know, a joshing locker room conversation the same way you would somebody accepting a Nobel Prize, right? Donald Trump's remarks about grabbing them by the pussy were not generic remarks about the way he operated towards women. He was talking in a locker room atmosphere with another man about how he makes the move on women who already want to sleep with him. And he just, you know, accelerates that. And a week later, Rogers was right back on the show for his regular appearance, during which the quarterback notably did not apologize to Kimmel. The next day, McAfee announced that Rodgers would not return to the program for the remainder of the NFL season, but no one seriously doubts that he'll be back before the fall. Two months later, CNN reported that Rodgers had, in private conversations, expressed suspicions that the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School was a government inside job. After Rodgers tweeted a denial, I am not and have never been of the opinion that the events did not take place, McAfee read it aloud on his show. I'm happy to hear that, McAfee said. That is good news. Anyone expecting Mac? So I remember when my father started his regular radio show. So it was 1980. He'd been removed from the Seventh-day Adventist Church ministry, and he'd come out to Auburn, California, and there was fundings. He set up a nonprofit evangelical Christian foundation that's still going called Good News Unlimited. And the organization, you know, bought him time on various radio stations. And my father, in his 
first first few talks, he was doing them off of notes instead of reading his his talk. And so there's a price to be paid when you operate from notes as opposed to just reading, right? So the edgy of the conversation, all right, the more free the conversation, all right, the more ribald the conversation, right, the more joshing, the more locker room atmosphere to the conversation, right, the more likely you are to say something inappropriate. But the primary purpose of a TV show or a podcast or a live stream like this is not to avoid saying something inappropriate. Right? The primary purpose is to provide merit, something of merit, whether that merit is humor or entertainment or information.